I'm going to be getting married here soon. Sorry for getting married before you, Brenda. Which is sad, because I'm five years younger than you. So you've decided to get married? Congratulations on that. I'm not really sure there's a need for you to be comparing myself to you, but it's great to hear that things have been going so well in your relationship. You're 35 years old now, right? By this point, I'd say you're pretty much past your prime. You don't have to say things like that. What do you think any of that accomplishes? Well, I happen to still be 30 years old, and my wife is 27 years old. Isn't this crazy for you to hear right now? Aiden, I'd be watching my mouth if I were you. I understand that you're so excited and happy to be getting married, but that does not give you permission to start bashing me like that, okay? Bashing you? All I'm doing is saying the truth about you right now. I just think it's great that I'm going to be getting married to a woman that's even younger than myself. If you wanted to be in the same boat as she is when the wedding happens, then you're going to need to find yourself a man in his 40s soon. Why are you mentioning that? My life has nothing to do with what you think, right? So would you please stop it with all that jabbering on about my life? I'm not jabbering on about anything. I'm just trying to make it obvious to you that I want you to try a little more is all. Is it not embarrassing to come in second place to me in everything? What do you mean, Aiden? This is not some kind of competition, alright? I really want to know why you're going on and on about things like this. Aren't you getting really worked up and afraid right now because your little brother's getting married before you? If I were in your shoes right now, I'd be freaking out. Being the oldest sibling, yet still not having a partner worth marrying yet? And considering you're a woman, isn't that embarrassing to you? The only thing I'm worried about right now is that my little brother thinks the same way a man in the 1920s would have been thinking about things. We live in the 21st century now, and that kind of worry about marrying while one is young needs to stop. What the heck? What are you trying to get at there? If you don't understand what I'm saying, then maybe you need to put a little more thought into it. I don't want to talk with you anymore, okay? Just leave me alone and think about the things you've just said to me and why they'd all make me want to stop talking. Do you remember the last time you were acting out like this? You started to make fun of Dad and call him all sorts of names. Is that when I made fun of him? always forgetting things, and asked him if he was already going crazy, or something like that. Was that really such a big deal to all of you? Because it wasn't. You all are just a bunch of tight asses. I think we are all having to put up with a lot from you recently, because you've only become a lot worse when it comes to being kind. What do you mean, putting up with? I'm a very good son to both mom and dad, aren't I? I happen to be getting married early on. Very different from someone else in the family, right? That's what I mean. I get that you're the kind of person to always think about yourself before anyone else and never think before you speak. But just remember that you should be thankful for all of us around you. If you start to forget that, then you'll be in for loads of trouble. When are you planning on coming here? What? Planning on coming to what? Huh? What do you mean by that? Don't tell me you've forgotten what day it is. You would never know a show on a day like today, right? So, when are you coming? What would I have forgotten about, Aiden? What do you mean, when I am coming? Where am I supposed to be going to right now? Was there something happening today that I need to be at? Huh? You're lying, right? Are you being serious with me right now about that? What is going on here? I literally have no idea what you keep going on about. Is this some kind of joke? You're the one that seems to be joking right now. But I want you to stop that. You're going to piss me off if you keep that going. Which would be a waste on a day like today. No, seriously, Aiden. 
I have no clue what you keep talking about. Coming out of nowhere like that and sending me all these strange messages is not funny. You're just starting to annoy me is all. Huh? So what you're telling me is that you really did forget about what today is? Are you freaking kidding me, Brenda? I'm just asking you to explain to me what's going on here for crying out loud. If my family no-shows on the day of my wedding, I'm going to cut ties with all of you! Stop it with that stupid joke already, god dang it! You are about to make me go crazy with the way you're acting right now. What? Today's your wedding? Are you freaking kidding me? There's no freaking way. So you really did forget about today. Forgetting about your little brother's wedding like that? No, hold on, just wait a second. What are you actually talking about right now? The fact that I have as horrible of a person as you as my older sister makes me want to give up. No showing on the day of your only sibling's wedding? Like that is screwed up! If you don't get over here right now, then I'm going to cut ties with you and the whole family! The date that's on your invitation is saying the wedding is tomorrow. What? You can get mad all you want for not staying level-headed and listening to me when I said I had no clue what you were going on about. But what I just said is a fact. I just took another look at the invitation and just as I thought, it says your wedding is tomorrow. So your wedding should be tomorrow, right? What are you going on about? You think an excuse like that is going to work on me? There's no way I'm the one who's mistaken here. Come on now. Take a look for yourself, why don't you? Perhaps the invitation you sent me has the wrong date on it? I'm not sure who all else might have gotten a misprint like this, but if everyone got this same invitation as me, then nobody you invited is going to be coming to that wedding of yours today. Hold on two seconds. I just had a look. You weren't kidding. The date on these invitations are all wrong! So you finally had a look yourself? I'm sure you're standing there looking like an idiot right now, but I wasn't lying about any of that. Who the heck made all these invitations, Aiden? I did. And I went and made dozens of copies of this to send to everyone I wanted here. So, with that being said, Everyone you invited thinks that your wedding is tomorrow. This is not good! No way! You're telling me I didn't notice this error and sent everyone the invitation? Then that means none of the people I invited are going to show up today! Well, that's what it seems like. Besides yourself, I don't think a single person is going to be showing up that you sent those invitations to. You should have taken a better look at your invitations and had your fiancé look at them as well before sending them all out. If none of the people I invited come today, what's going to happen to the wedding? If there's nobody here to celebrate me, then this wedding will be like hell! At that point, I wouldn't even call that a wedding. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but you're the one that did this to yourself, right? Your fiancé, or wife, is it? Wasn't the one to send those out, right? That's right! I was told to be the one to prepare and send them all out. So that's what I did! When it comes to those invitations, the date and place are the two most important parts, so you should have double-checked that! Well, it's too late to tell you that now. Everyone's already received their invites. I want to know what to do here. You're going to have to tell your wife about all of this, right? That should be your first step. You have to let her know about what you've done. You can't just have the wedding and not tell her anything about what's happened. That's a good point. I'll go and tell her about all of this right now. Letting things be would only make things worse later on. I have to go talk to her right now. Good luck, Aiden. Crap! She is really upset with me now! I would have been better off not telling her a thing! Had you not told her, the reality of the situation you're in wouldn't have changed. 
I think it was a good choice letting her know sooner rather than later. And now this means you've taken responsibility for what you've done. Right now she's blaming me for everything, because I was the one that sent them out. If things stay this way, we won't be able to have the wedding because she's so upset with me. What am I going to do about all this? Just a bit ago, you were getting all upset with me and saying you'd cut ties to me, right? And in the end, it was all your fault for this stuff happening. <laughs> you shouldn't. You don't have to add salt to my already fresh wound, okay? Right now, things are pretty tough for me, and I'm going to have to find a way out of this. Can you be a little more kind with your words right now? You're supposed to be my older sister! Come on, you can complain about me all you want, but that's not going to help your current situation any, is it? You should have done a better job checking things over before sending those invitations, right? You had time to do all of that back when making the cards and then receiving them to send out yourself, right? You don't have to tell me all of that now. I get it! But right now, I have no idea what to do, okay? Would you please start giving me some freaking advice instead of talking down about what I've done? Well, when you start asking me to do things in that kind of bossy tone, I really don't want to do anything to help you. I want to know what I should be doing right now, Brenda! If I don't act, then this wedding is going to go nowhere besides being cancelled! I don't care about that. How about for starters, you learn from all this? Learn from this? What is there to learn right now? Oh, please. You know what I'm talking about. Do you have no memory of the way you've always behaved toward me? About all those times you were so selfish around me and didn't give a crap about how what you were doing was affecting me. None of that rings a bell. Behaved? I was... being that mean towards you or something? You picked on me for not being married yet. And you always acted like you were the best because of my situation. I was just telling you the truth. It's a very good thing to be as confident and happy about yourself as you've been. But when you start bringing others down to make yourself look even more attractive, then there's a major problem. You would also pick on my life choices and would even speak badly about mom and dad in front of them. Because you always behaved in that manner around us, I find this to be what you deserve. No matter how horrible of a situation you're in at the moment, I find it totally natural that nobody wants to come and help you. Hold up. Are you really that mad at me right now? Was I really saying that bad of things about you and both mom and dad? The fact that you can't even tell how rude you were being is awful. It's very terrifying, actually. If you're never going to understand that the way you've been acting is wrong, then nobody is ever going to come to your aid when you need them. What? What is wrong with you, Brenda? Another thing, Aiden. When you came over to Mom and Dad's house a little while back, you went and took some of their money, right? Wait, took the money sounds a little bad. I just happened to not have enough money for myself, so I went and borrowed some from them. Why do you know about that to begin with? You borrowed that money? Then what happened to you ever paying them back? Well, that's the thing. I haven't gotten around to that part yet. So then you probably shouldn't say you were borrowing it then yet. Do you even plan on giving them that money back? I do, of course. When? I don't know when just yet. Well, look at that. You don't care to get them that money back. If you cared to, then you would have given them a time frame so that they could hold you accountable. The fact that you are this troubled and always cause problems for the family is probably why you're getting what you deserved now, right? I never meant to do anything wrong, though. I'm sorry, Brenda. What? What are you feeling sorry about? I'm pretty sure you're only saying that to get me to be quiet about all the wrongs you've done to everyone around you, right? It's not going to work, so don't even tell me you're sorry again. Hold on, though. I really didn't know that you've been this upset with me. 
I was just teasing you is all, and there was no greater meaning to it. Even if that was all you meant to do, you still hurt me. You knew that too, because you were poking fun at me for things that one of your age shouldn't be doing. Since you act that way with me so much, I'm sure you act that way with people outside the family as well. I seriously never noticed that any of what I was doing was bad though. That's why I'm being honest when I say I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt you in any way, alright? I want you to understand that, okay? I really do feel sorry about all of that right now. From now on, I promise to think about how I talk with you before I speak. Are you sure you're being serious enough about that? Is it okay for me to believe you then? Please, believe me. I'll make sure that money I got from mom and dad is returned to them as well. I'll even go and apologize to mom and dad as well. I had used too much money on the wedding, and had nothing left to put towards bills and food. So I was just planning on borrowing some from them is all. You stole the ability to retire from dad, you know. Well, I never meant to do that to him. But now that you've said all this, my eyes have been opened. From now on, I'll be more careful of what I do and say, and make sure to take responsibility for my actions. Once again, I'm sorry for never noticing any of this and hurting you. If you've come to understand what I've told you, then that's good. I'm going to give you a call right now. Luckily, you were able to have a good wedding after all that. Brenda, thank you so much for everything. This is all because of you, and has nothing to do with me. The fact that you went ahead and called everyone in the family, and let them know about the mistake I made, and you talking with the manager of the building, and asking them to start the wedding a little later for me. We were able to wait for everyone to come here, and from there, we were able to have this wedding. I am so thankful for all of that. You're welcome. And you'll be thanking me for all that for the rest of your life. I really will. After seeing my little brother begging me to help, I couldn't just sit there, even if you've been such a jackass to Mom, Dad, and I. I wasn't really begging. Well, when you were on the phone with me, you sure sounded like you were begging. Well, that doesn't matter now. Just don't forget anything I've said to you today, okay? If you begin to clean up your act, then I'm sure in no time good things will start to happen to you again. I totally understand that now. From now on, I'll try harder to show you just how thankful I am for everything you've done today. Thank you again, Brenda. Wait, um... Thank you for literally everything, Brenda. If you're still able to apologize and thank me like that now, then that means you still have a chance of being alright. <laughs> I'm actually a bit upset that things turned out this well for you in the end, but I think this is a good turning point for you. Now, you make sure to treat your wife kindly, okay? In the end, thanks to all that work I put in, the wedding was a success for my brother and his wife. Albeit starting two hours after it was planned for. Because of all my effort, I would be thanked by both my brother and his wife for a very long time, showing that they still had not forgotten about what happened. I didn't know how things would end for Aiden, but the fact that he was able to have his eyes open to his actions and learn from them is wonderful. He even came around to paying my dad back for all the money he borrowed before. It seems that everyone is a whole lot more content with my brother now, and you could call this a happy ending for everyone involved. And because of that, I'm a whole lot more relieved than I was before my brother's wedding. Hello, Mary. Do you have a moment? Oh, hello. Um, should I still be calling you by your first name? I don't know if it's right for me to be calling you mom just yet, you know? I think you're right. It's too soon for you to be calling me mom. I'm not your mother. Yet, anyways. Oh, sorry to put you on the spot like that. 
Well, let's start over then, shall we? Hello, Hillary. Thanks for coming to meet me and my parents the other day. It was great to finally meet you. Ah, uh, yes, that's the thing. Don't mention it. <laughs> so, what can I do for you today? I have a question for you, and I would appreciate an honest answer. You and my husband work at the same company, do you not? And furthermore, you recently started working in the same department together, is that true? Uh, yes, that's right! Actually, I heard from Andrew a while ago that his dad was working at the same company as me. But I was totally surprised when I walked into the room where you two were waiting and who should I see but the person who just got transferred into my branch recently. It was a total surprise. Well, I suppose our family name is somewhat of a common one, so it doesn't surprise me one bit that you wouldn't suspect that we were related when you saw that we had the same last names. But that's not the issue I'm here to discuss today. The issue is your reproachable behavior towards my husband. Uh, what? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Did I do something that offended him? Offended? Oh, that's nowhere near strong enough a word to describe your attitude towards my husband. When I left to go to the little girl's room, I saw him apologizing profusely to you, and you were lecturing him like he was a school child. I know my eyes were not deceiving me to see that horrible behavior. Oh, I'm sorry that you had to see that. I'm... Oh, how dare dare you behave that way toward the man who will be your future father-in-law? And not to mention, he's been with the company far longer than you have. He must be well above your rank, obviously. And in spite of all that, you were behaving like you were his superior. <laughs> How shameless of you. I bit my tongue at the time out of concern for my son's feelings for you, but I cannot contain my anger any longer. If you're willing to apologize to me right now for your awful behavior, I'm willing to overlook it. But if you don't, then I withdraw my permission for you to marry my son and my blessings on a happy wedding. Um, are, are you serious? I am very serious and I will not accept any excuses from you, Mary. Either apologize to me or you can forget being a part of this family. Um, okay, just so you know, we were actually talking about something to do with work that day. And in your husband's position, really the only appropriate thing to do would be to apologize. Excuse me? Really, it was kind of a surprise for me too when he suddenly started acting like that. I told him it was okay and that he didn't need to apologize so much, but, you know, he just kept going. And I wish I can give you more information on what really went down, but like I said, it's company internal matters, so I'm contractually not able to divulge any information to uninvolved third parties such as yourself, ma'am. Oh, don't talk to me with this legal jargon. What do you mean, internal matters? I mean exactly what I said. It's a company matter, and since you're not involved, I'm not able to discuss it with you. I get that you'd like to know more about what happened, but please understand that I cannot tell you any more than I have already have. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. But in any case, it seems like you have no intention to apologize to me. It's like I told you, I'm not the one who has anything to apologize for. <laughs> I see. So you have no remorse for treating your soon-to-be father-in-law. So be it. I will not allow you to marry my son and the wedding is off! I don't think you're in any position to make that call, Hillary. <laughs> I think this goes without saying, but the fault in the situation lies 100% with you, Mary. As such, you'll be responsible for paying for all of the venue cancellation fees. I'll be contacting our lawyer very shortly and we'll be suing you for that and for the pain and suffering that you have caused this family. Andrew? Hey, Mary. What's up? 
This is bad. Really bad. Uh-oh. What happened? Your mom saw your dad apologizing to me at your house the other day. Oh boy. Uh-huh. She texted me about that just now. And she is really, really mad. Which, in all fairness, I don't really blame her, you know, considering that she doesn't know the whole circumstances. But still, this is bad. She said that if I don't apologize to her for that, that she's gonna make us break off our engagement. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I had literally just made an explicit promise not to tell anyone about what happened. So it's not like I can just up and spill the beans to her. Oh, why are my parents always doing things like this? They're inseparable to the point that I almost never see one without the other in the same room. And yet when trouble rears its ugly head, they take completely opposite approaches. It seems like you're pretty used to this kind of thing from them, huh? Sorry about that. I just felt the urge to vent. Anyway, for now, I'd like to see the text Mom sent you, if you wouldn't mind. Is it okay if I head over to your place right now? Yeah, come on over. It's fine. Okay. I'll be there in just about an hour or so. Alright, I'll be waiting for you. Hello there, Mary. Have you prepared yourself for the impending breakup with my son? I haven't heard a thing from you ever since I gave you my ultimatum. So now, I'm forced to message you like this. I grow more disappointed with you by the day. How long were you going to keep me waiting? You really are an impudent little girl, aren't you? If you're trying to wait it out and hope I forgive you, <laughs> it's not going to work. I will not consent to this marriage until you've given me a proper apology. Um, if I may be so bold. I'm Mary Andrew, not you. Why exactly do I need to have your consent? Oh, excuse me? I doubt that Andrew would want to break off our engagement because I won't apologize over a situation in which I did nothing wrong. And frankly, I'm perplexed that you would simply assume that I was in the wrong rather than talking to your husband and finding out what actually happened. That's very immature of you. I'm at a loss of words for you, Mary. To think that you would speak in such an uncivilized manner to the mother of the man you're hoping to marry! Hoping? Yes, hoping! I haven't opened up my consent for you just yet, have I? Oh, I must have missed where we established that I even needed your consent. You little- Stop interrupting me! I'm giving you the lecture that you deserve right now! All right, by all means, go ahead. If a family were like a company, then the mother-in-law is like the superior and the daughter-in-law is the subordinate. And subordinates are supposed to listen to their superiors, correct? If you were to fuss and fret and whine over an order your superior at the company gave you, well, how do you think that would go? Obviously, no superior would stand for that sort of insubordination. <laughs> you would be punished severely, and you would be demoted. Your pay would be cut, you'd be transferred, and your professional life would be finished. Surely even someone of your intellectual capacity could understand what I just explained. Yes, I understand perfectly. So I take this to mean that if someone at a real company actually was repeatedly insubordinate to their superior, then you'd have no issues with that subordinate receiving those type of punishments you laid out, correct? Exactly. Subordinates should know their place. A subordinate who does not and openly disrespects his superior should not go unpunished. Hillary, you are so smart. And I agree with you. Alright, that settles it. Looks like your husband is getting transferred. What? 
Technically, the final call isn't mine to make, but you should probably operate under the assumption that it is going to happen, so I think you should start preparing accordingly to this. Wait, what are you t what, wait, what nonsense are you talking about? You know, I'm sure you're about to become very busy. Since you're going to be moving soon, you should probably start looking for a new house or an apartment, you know, as soon as you get the word of where he's being transferred to. Wait, Mary? What are you talking about? What are you rambling about right now? So, oh, sorry, I gotta go. I have some stuff to do. I need to get back to work. there, Mary. It's been so long since we've seen each other. Would you like to come over and have some afternoon tea with me someday soon? Maybe tomorrow. Um, what are you doing? A friend of mine gave me a box of the most wonderful tea the other day, and I knew I had to share it with you. Oh, and I'm also going to pick up some cake from that new pastry shop downtown. Are you free this weekend? I'd love to have you over to our house if you don't mind. I guess this is your last ditch effort to stop the inevitable, huh? Well... Don't you think you're laying it on a wee bit too thick right now, Hillary? Mary, I... I guess you finally heard the truth then. You know, about my husband and your husband's position in the company. I heard everything, and come to find out, my husband is a complete useless employee who keeps getting sent around to different departments once he makes too much of a mess for them to deal with. And three months ago, he got sent to a new department to work under a young and upcoming leader in the company who happens to be you, Mary. He was frustrated and embarrassed that someone as young as you was placed above someone else who has been in the company as long as him. So he got desperate to prove himself and started working at a faster pace than ever before. Which ended up causing a world of problems for your clients and other departments. And since you're his direct superior, you're the one who always had to clean up for his messes. Yeah, that just about covers it. So the reason he was apologizing that day when you came over to meet my parents and I was because he was so shocked to learn that his son's fiance was none other than the boss he had been causing so much trouble for at the office. And he was desperate to keep you from finding out about what a total disaster his career has been. He was begging me not to tell you that I was his boss. And I had to stop him from getting on his knees and begging me, and that's probably why you thought that I was lecturing him. So you weren't lecturing my husband, you were just trying to get him to maintain his dignity. Oh, and by the way, I guess he was counting on Andrew taking his side and helping to convince me to help him out. He was all like, you're a man too, son, aren't you? You must know what sort of position I'm in. But Andrew wasn't going for it at all. He just let out a huge sigh and walked out of the room. I see. So, so that's what happened. I've always been the type to have a pretty solid separation between my work life and my private life. And since our relationship at work would probably only serve to cause problems between us as a family, I didn't have any intentions of bossing him around outside of work. At first, anyway. Then I found out what your husband had been doing at the office ever since he found out I was marrying Andrew. He's been name dropping me at the company and trying to get other people to give him credit for their work. Like threatening to get them fired if they didn't do as he demanded. He did. I received multiple complaints of that nature from multiple employees in my department. So I made a report of my own to my superior. And as a result, it's been decided that your husband is getting transferred to a branch in, well, the middle of nowhere. Oh no. Oh yes. And you know, you should be grateful, honestly. Most people who screwed up as bad as your husband actually would just get fired for everything they've done. 
And I bet the only reason he didn't was because the CEO took pity on him. He didn't want to just kick a man your husband's age on the curb with no future employment prospects. Mary, isn't there anything you can do about this? Sorry, Hillary, but the decision is already out of my hands. What's done is done. So no, I'm afraid sucking up to me now isn't going to get you anywhere. You'll either have to move out into Nowheresville with your husband, or make him go by himself while you stay here alone in your house. This can't be happening! I suppose there is a third option. You could always divorce him, but that's about all you have in terms of options when you really think about it. I can't do that! I haven't worked in years, and I can't get divorced at my age! Okay, well, then you're just going to have to talk to your husband about this. What you do from here on out is an issue between the two of you that has nothing to do with me. Wait, I, I got it! I, I know how we can make this all work out. Oh, really? Okay, let's hear it. I'll give you my permission to marry Andrew, and you can move in with us. And if you do that, then I'm sure that everything will work out whether I divorce my husband or he moves away by himself. That is definitely not happening. Why not? Andrew has been pretty firm since day one that he did not want to move in with you at any point in the future. And I'm respecting my future husband's wishes. But... I'm sorry, Hillary, but I really don't see the point of continuing this conversation. I'm just gonna keep repeating myself at this point. Mary, please! I'm signing off now. After that, I understood Andrew's parents got into a massive fight. Hillary needed someone to finance her lifestyle, and her husband needed someone to take care of all of the housework. And since neither of them were likely to find a replacement for the other at their age, they decided not to get divorced. So the not-so-happy couple set off for their new life in Nowheresville. However, it didn't take long for her husband to screw up big time, no surprise to anybody, again, in his new post. And this time, they actually were fed up and let him go. And this was apparently too much of a strain for their relationship to handle, so they are getting a divorce this time. They've both been messaging and calling Andrew, complaining about the whole situation, but he only ever gives them the same simple response every time. You're getting what you deserve! Andrew is finally fed up with them and wants to cut them out of our lives. So we're making preparations to move in secret so they won't know where to find us. I'm glad to see that he's finally free from having to deal with their nonsense after all these years. And we decided that we didn't want our marriage to resemble his parents in any way, shape, or form. So when we got married the other day, he took my last name instead. <laughs>